Well, this is a joyful moment. Having already been spoiled by the chance to finally see a fully animated recreation of Power of the Daleks three years ago, despite the fact that not a single episode survived the BBC purges, we now have another story with no surviving episodes getting fully animated. If you're not familiar with the missing episode issue, I have a few availables about it called Lost in Time if you'd like to get into the details. The gist of it is that for a number of reasons, a large number of Doctor Who episodes were destroyed in the early days of the program. Now, some were recovered thanks to various circumstances, and right now, the total count stands at 97 missing. Uh, to explain, the stories are often multi-parters, so 97 doesn't mean 97 stories, it's individual episodes. That's still a large number, but that figure used to be in the three-digit range, so... A lot of years of searching and such has eventually found a way to at least get that number down to two digits. Although at this point, it's unlikely to ever drop below 97. Please prove me wrong. The one positive in all this is that fans were dedicated enough to record episodes themselves on audio tape, so that all 97 at least endure in audio format. As one Doctor Who fan cheekily remarked, I'm blind, so for me... The current missing episode count is zero. Animated recreations of the episodes began with The Invasion, which was missing two of the eight episodes. And over time, the BBC did the same to Ice Warriors, The Reign of Terror, The Tenth Planet, and The Moon Base. But there were two cases where, despite having at least half the episodes, the BBC didn't animate them. The Underwater Menace and The Web of Fear. Not to mention the fact that the Crusades, which had previously been released on the BBC's own Lost in Time series, has not been released separately as well, with any kind of recreation at all. Now, The Web of Fear was likely because the discovery of four of the five missing episodes from the story prompted a quick release, and animating even one episode is going to be an involved process. After all, the way animation works today is a lot different than the way it used to. And so if you're creating a multi-episodes, you're using a lot of the same assets in all of those. If you're creating it for just one episode, then it's not as simple as it sounds. The Underwater Menace is a strange one, as not only did the BBC not want to animate the episodes in the end, they specifically asked for the weakest possible reconstruction from the restoration team, even after offering to do a more thorough one at no additional cost. Well, I'll be the first to tell you the story is pretty dreadful. It still strikes me as, at best, inexplicable, and at worst, spiteful. What is amazing is that nine years ago, when the invasion animated completion was revealed, well, it's a long story. Suffice to say, an attempt was made to convince the BBC that this was practical by having a fan-funded, fully animated recreation of Mission to the Unknown, aka Dalek Cutaway. Since then, the technology has only improved and the restrictions loosened. For instance, in The Invasion, it had been decided nothing that wouldn't have been seen in the original episode could be there. For example, no Big Brother-like screen calling to the guards, just a primitive public address system. With the Macra Terror, it's quite clear that they are using the freedom the animation allows to get past the budget restrictions that the original story had. This work on the Macra Terror, though, does a lot to further eliminate the desert of Season 4, a season with not one single story surviving in its entirety. But now with animation, we can watch in its entirety four of those nine. Evil of the Daleks, while on the long side, along with the Wheel in Space, are both strong contenders if they were to try this again with more of Troughton's run, both having popular villains, and have one or two episodes, respectively, still around. Though I have to confess, personally, I would really actually like to see Fury from the Deep as the next project. Because a great thing about the Macra Terror is that it doesn't feature a recurring villain. While I think the Cybermen and the Daleks are great enemies, there were a lot of great standalone tales that get overshadowed by them. It's fortunate, for instance, that Enemy of the World was found in its entirety, because while it was missing... It was a much maligned story, even officially licensed books to talk down about it. Quote, In the final analysis, 
Despite attracting some favorable comments, The Enemy of the World must still be considered the weakest story of the fifth season and one so markedly different in style from the others, most obviously in its lack of alien monsters, that it really sticks out like a sore thumb. Yet go out and read the reviews of it now. It's the reverse. Not only has the story received virtually universal acclaim from both fans and critics, but some have even gone on record calling it one of the best stories of its era. But if Philip Morris hadn't found it, would it have had even an outside chance of being animated? Hell no. Not for a maligned story with so many sets, characters, and action scenes. This may sound stupid, but you have no idea how happy it makes me that people are getting a look at Trout and beyond what they would normally expect of his era to say, hey, we were missing out on something that was really pretty great. Attention has been drawn to the public thanks to events after the last six years, to Troughton does James Bond, Troughton versus a horrifying menace in the London underground, Troughton battles the Doctor's mortal enemy as they align opposing factions against each other, and now, Troughton fighting Brave New World. No disrespect to William Hartnell, I mean, I think The Myth Makers is another one that people would really appreciate if it were found or animated. But so much of Troughton's run is absent that it's great for him to finally be getting widespread attention drawn to the work that he did for Doctor Who. So, without further ado, let's get to this animated recreation of the Macro Terror. We begin with the ending of the last story, The Moon Base, which included an extremely unusual and ultimately disregarded piece of technology, the Time Scanner, which gives you a glimpse of the future. The final episode of The Moon Base is actually intact, so we can see what it was, but the episode animates it for us to no doubt keep it a consistent look. So, what do we see? Doctor? Mm -hmm. Look! Oh boy, hopefully that just means we're visiting a Red Lobster restaurant. The claw, incidentally, is much larger and more menacing than the original, better presenting the horror that is to come. Amusingly, the original prop macros were a real problem and was the point when they decided they could no longer use that production company and had to go with someone else. But anyway, after the titles, we see a guy we later learn is named Medoc and incoming message from the big giant head. While inside... Oh, I love Grey Toberfest. It's always so neutral. Pilot shows up, congratulating on the success of this party as measured by its grayness, but Medoc interrupts, soon pursued by guards outside the colony into the scrubland. He spots the TARDIS materializing. One thing about this era was the kind of sound to it. Lots of these episodes have a very atmospheric and often alien sound to them, or even just to create the mood. Anyway, our heroes are concerned about the monsters that they glimpsed, and so overreact with Medoc, who slowly approaches them, Ben tackling him to the ground while the guy's wearing a, wait, I haven't done anything look. Why is everyone in the world out to get me? The cops show up and are almost as happy to show our heroes to their colony as they are to tie up Medoc. Uh, not too tight. It's bad for the blood pressure. Oh yeah, now you're concerned about my well-being, jerks. Well, time for the colony. Even season one Will Riker would have been gagging at this feel-good, roll-up-our-sleeves-and-help-the-community attitude. The Doctor and company are treated as honored guests, and Pilot personally leads them to the refreshing area to get rejuvenated. But on the way, the big head returns. Control. Just to give everyone that good Big Brother pep talk before Barney lays out the myriad ways that they are to be pampered. Yes, for once, it seems like they've gone somewhere nice. Come on, move back. This prisoner's not to be trusted. He's violent and suffering from delusion. Shame. 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 Medoc's friend can't seem to reason with them, 
even when Controller announces that there's going to be a party tonight. Me don't join in with the rest of us like you used to. It okay. will be fun for all. Belisnikar decrees there shall be fun. Well, the doctor is curious about what's going on with me, Doc, and that Claw wasn't out of character knowledge either. He knows that there has to be something wrong here. So with me, Doc, ranting about things everyone dismisses as hallucinations, the doctor wants to delve a little deeper. So he sneaks in and unties me, Doc. Stop him! Don't let him escape! How did he get away? Who's responsible? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, in my defense, I saw this conversation going a lot differently in my head. Pilot's reasonable and decides to let bygones be bygones and all that, but Ola isn't very happy, especially when the doctor makes a passing comment about running away rather than crawling. Anyone who spreads that kind of rumor in this colony will find himself in the hospital for correction. Now that's the Orwell we've all been looking for. The doctor is reunited with the others and shown around, hearing more jingles about being happy here and learning that this colony depends on a gas that they go to a great deal of trouble to get because it's so important. They just don't say why. But the doctor is more interested in what Medoc had to say and slips away to where he had spotted Medoc hiding to ask him. And yeah, he and others are locked up in the hospital on orders from control, having all seen something like what was on the monitor. Unfortunately, the doctor's absence is noted, so he has to slip back, and Control announces that it's time for curfew, and specifically mentions the doctor's group so that he can't feign ignorance of the law this time. Now hear this! Fool me twice, shame on me! But the doctor, especially this incarnation, doesn't see anything authorities say as anything more than a suggestion. It can be, You, the doctor, are absolutely forbidden, on pain of death, to go outside under any and all circumstances, up to and including fire, Godzilla attack, or the sun falling out of the sky. Stay indoors or perish. And he'll just reply, A very thoughtful of you to warn me. Now excuse me while I slip outside, please. He finds Medoc, and good thing because Ola repeats the orders of control. Shoot to kill. The doctor is going to try to protect him, but that's when they see something crawling out of the darkness. We're going to need butter and a really big mallet. Fortunately, it heads back inside, but Medoc is so excited to know that he's not crazy that he makes so much noise he draws the guards. And, shockingly, Ola does not believe them about the Macra, and has them both arrested to be brought before Pilot. Crucify him! Crucify him! Oh, not that pilot. All industry and activity. Emergency call. Emergency call. Yes, go ahead, emergency. Um, no, I'm not called emergency. I mean the... Quiet, I'm the pilot. Don't dare to correct me. Of course, pilot, I was just wasting my time trying to correct me. Now, out with it, man. I haven't got all day. Well, it... It's night, pilot. That's it. You're on report, Mr. Emergency, if that is your real name. It's not. The doctor is brought in and seems more interested in looking at their gadgets than in cooperating with Pilot's investigation into the doctor's arrest. But when he can finally be bothered to answer some questions about this, there's a good news coming. Medoc has come to the rescue, saying that the doctor was there to try to get him to turn himself in rather than aiding in his escape. Ola is not pleased. The doctor is harder to build a case against than the drunk son of a billionaire whose godfather is the governor. The doctor asks about Medoc's treatment. 